you know, when Pulp Fiction came out, I feel like a fair amount of critics or people had said that was your your quote unquote comeback. Mm -hmm. Did it feel like that for you at the time, or because you were had been working regularly? It well, like it, it didn't feel like a comeback, but I do understand there there's angles that you could take on a, a so called comeback. Uh, for for Quentin, for instance, it was a comeback because. He knew I started out with, with a high-end performance with Saturday Night Fever, and he wanted me to be always getting those kinds of roles and, uh, and felt I deserved that. Mm -hmm. And so if I did anything less than what he thought was ideal, then it, it wasn't really, you weren't there. And, and so you have to say, well, um, I, I believe in all angles of work, and you don't want to nullify a Luke Who's Talking or another light film just because it's light fair yeah. you know it's valid entertainment so uh i i might have had a disagreement of a so-called comeback but i do understand you know he's kind of thinking oscar worthy comeback you know as versus just entertainment your performance in that movie and i don't think it's ever referred to this because it's not marijuana he's smoking it's something much much worse that he's doing in terms of drugs but it is a perfected stoner performance he is stoned throughout the whole movie that is true and you have and you find it perfectly how did you how did you work that out what kind of conversations uh, did you well, have well that was that? a really good one because uh uh that's not my lifestyle no of course not and, uh, <laughs> no implications <laughs> but i had to find out the truth of it and uh so uh, he uh quentin sent me up with an interview with uh, they called it Chippy, a weekend heroin addict. And then I found on my own a daily ex-heroin addict, and I, I did co took copious notes about how they uh, behaved when they're on the good stuff and when they're on the bad stuff and all the differences. And I came to a happy medium about the behavior that he would have. Uh, and then uh, finally I said, okay, these notes are wonderful, but how do I execute it without getting a taste of what this is like. So finally I said to the ex-weekend chipper, I said, what do I do? Because I'm not gonna do heroin, so what can I do to, to actually uh, feel something? He said, well, okay, if you have to, get plastered on a bunch of tequila <laughs> and lay in a warm pool of water. And he said, and then you'll be at the bottom of the feeling that you start to feel when you're on heroin. And I said, well, I could do that. So, so I ordered good, good Friday night. a bunch of shots of it and did it and went, ah, okay. And then the notes I could apply, all those notes that I had from both drug addicts, I could apply to that feeling and exaggerate it when needed yeah. because they described beautifully the arc of, of a heroin high, beautifully. So I, uh, whether Quentin knew it or not, but he built in beautifully the arc. And he didn't, I don't even know he, if he knew that he had but from the time he shoots up to the time he picks up Mia to the time he goes to the restaurant to the time the shocking overdose happens, right. that's when by that time in any of that evening he would have started to come down. Yeah. So that sober thing that happened to him when the needle is shot is probably the point where that heroin started to... to and so it worked beautifully for me. But I remember Quentin even saying, I don't know exactly what John's doing, you know, he's shuffling slowly and he's moving, he's talking slowly and he's looking around. But that was my playing the, the arc of, of the heroine. That's so you interesting because he's such a specific writer and everybody talks about him as such a specific writer, but he still lets the actor come on set and really bring their ideas of the character. He's to old it. fashioned in that idea that when you hire an actor, you've done 90% of your work where you, you, you trust them. And because he once said to me, he said, I have. He said, the reason I've chosen you is because I find you a very unpredictable actor. Mm. And he said, but I like that. He said, if I wanted a predictable actor, I'd have hired this guy or that guy or that guy. He said, but in this role, I don't really want predictability. He said, and I think you're, whatever you come up with, you're going to give me something that I don't know what the journey will be, but I know I want to follow it. Mm -hmm.